welcome to the Unofficial Controller Podcast, your weekly gaming podcast, episode 219. Let the AI decide, because now we've got AI running the show's algorithms in the background. I don't even get to pick show names anymore, so let's hope it comes up with a banger. And in tribute to it, this week, me, George, joined by Bobby, T1000, to my Johnny Five. How's it going? Your mother was a snowblower, by the way. He's gone. He's corpsed. <sighs> How are you? I'm all right, man. Good. <laughs> What's been the most outrageous thing you've seen on the hot streets of New York? And we'll see how that compares to the hot streets of Farmerton this week. Uh, no, nothing too crazy. They just, um, they used to have these, and I know they're Mexican. I know. So let's not get. They are. I know that for a fact. I know one of them. Um, they had this paint store that they would just hang out in and drink beers and play guitar and sing songs all day. <laughs> and now it's a restaurant. Oh, wow. So they can't be there when it's open. And the restaurant went to 12, right? So <laughs> when you go for the walk on that neighborhood, they're still there. And then when they open up the restaurant, they shake the owner's hand. And now they just cross the street. Still playing the same music, still getting drunk in the streets with forties. It's just I thought they would have left by now. They, How does the paint? And store... as the stores start to open, they used to be like an, the whole block. Now they're just condensed into two little squares of concrete on the other side of the street. <laughs> How does a paint store become a restaurant overnight? The paint store just closed down after I don't know when exactly, and then a couple months later, it's a, it's a restaurant. To me, which was the most wildest transformation I've ever seen. But it works. It's a huge restaurant, I'll tell you that. Wow. I haven't seen anybody in there, but it's big. Hey, we haven't spoken on air. Trestles. We I mean, what is it Jackie, our friend down there? Yeah, yeah. She's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Not sure what's uh what's going on. I mean, food's still good. That's good. Because that's, so that's the good. show. So same. I mean, same flow doesn't seem to be any different. It's just uh, maybe she went on to another restaurant or something. I'm not really sure. We've got to reach out to her. Maybe yeah. The well, well, yeah. Uh, next week I'm gonna hang out with her. Next week and find out. Are you gonna hang out with her? Mm-hmm. Give her my best. I will. She remembers us. Of course she does. Of course, a little spot does. in the back we gave us, man. Remember? <laughs> that was a great episode. Beautiful mm-hmm. moment in the show's history. When we recorded, we spent quite some time. You know, obviously you live there, but then I came over, all catalogued on the yeah. show's Insta, and well, it probably isn't anymore. But yeah, it's good times. Yes, Jackie, what stays? What happens in Trestle stays in Trestle. Stay the Trestle, yeah. Mm. It's good times, man. What about the truffle buffalo wings? Still good. Yeah, nothing's changed, man. So food still there. They have still specials, you know, obviously specials, but not part of the menu, but same quality, which is think good. RGT would come in and be chill, or do you think he'd come in and be taking pictures everywhere? Like, oh, this is where they sat, and then he'd order all the food and go a little bit crazy? Yeah, he's he, he's very tame, but that place will unleash him. I think it would turn him into a, what I would describe as a feral beast. Yeah, it, it definitely He'll be uh, pictures everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and especially selfies. He'll take a lot of selfies. <laughs> Drinking a frosé selfie, truffle fry selfie, you know? Yeah. He'll do the whole bathroom because the bathroom sounds like a train, so he'll be in there recording. Hopefully not too low, but he'll be in there, you know? Stalking Jackie on Facebook. Mm-hmm. That's what I expect. I just... I wanted to be surprised. <clears throat> no, I don't think that'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my opinion. I don't know. So he's on holiday this week. I mean, mm-hmm. why is that allowed? I don't even know. And from what I understand, Seb is still blazing a trail across the American South with the tearaway Texan pasta. Yeah. I don't even know what's going on there. I heard he's trying to infiltrate a cult. You never know. The Texans are tricky. Yeah, based around Cuba. Mm-hmm. They see yeah. him as their god. 
Yeah. Can you work that out? Um, probably got influenced by the TV show Outer Range, even though that takes place in Arkansas. It's very similar, I think. Definitely a time travel loop. I don't even know what's real. I'll tell you what is real. Your game in history. What have you been playing? Um, I got the platinum for Dead Island 2, which yeah. was hilarious. I played it with uh, the Gaming Graham and Marlon. So that was enjoyable. Did uh, they plop out with the platinum as well, or did they just ably assist you with the platinum? No, well, I have more. I have a lot more free time than they do now, you know. Um, but I got it ahead of them. But now I'm so overpowered. I could probably help them get theirs in seconds. I even did. I did a DLC, which was pretty interesting. It wasn't the best DLC, but it was all right. Um, drop drop kicking a zombie in first person, hilarious. <laughs> seeing your seeing a character in third in third person drop kick a zombie, even m- more funny, because. I don't think they really do all the extra animations you would normally have in a game because it's first person. Yeah. So when they climb or jump or do anything, they look they just look dumb. Yeah. Like you're you're hitting a zombie with a bat, but it just looks like those things outside with the air for the cars to swooshing around. Oh shit! Yeah. It, it just looks like that. <laughs> so it was pretty funny to see that. Uh, but you know they didn't take it so seriously the the game. It was like kind of you know it was a little bit stupid, but it was funny. So it worked. Like the satire worked, and that's why I made it. I think was interesting because the amount of the amount of actual violence and um, the graphics used to maim enemies, depending on what weapon you're using, is incredible. I mean, you hit somebody with a bat at, with a heavy swing, and like their jaw flies off, and then the zombie just has no jaw. Like oh, that would be wow. extremely graphic if it wasn't so funny. Uh, if you scratch him to the dentist, yeah. If you scratch him in the back with a with like a, I forgot what it's called. It's like a three clawed weapon. You see three claws on the back. If it's a sword, you'll see one slice. And depending how it's cut, it'll be a clean cut, or you'll have like a bit of bone and an angle. What depending on what you used, the violence is incredible. You blow up a zombie with a with a with a pipe bomb. Oh man, it's uh. Oh man! <laughs> oh man! It's wild. It's definitely graphic, but I thought it was great. I thought it was pretty funny. So that was pretty good. Uh, I'll definitely finish that with them. Um, Rising and Ronin. Yeah, give me the lowdown on this. How good is this? I think it's amazing. I loved it. I even doing midnight. I mean, I got the platinum uh, like a month ago now, maybe three weeks ago, but I still play it on uh, midnight difficulty, and I'm doing all the dojo. My thing is to get the red score. There's a, I think it's green, yellow, red, depending on what you achieved in the score rank on a dojo. I'm trying to get everyone all red as I unlock them. It's mm. so much hard on midnight difficulty, but I'm telling you, Sekiro prepared me for this game. I saw how the combat goes. I think the combat is super fluid. Really good. What I didn't understand, I mean, I understand the history of Japan and how they want, you know, with the, let the West in, but they kept their traditions. So, you could pick going against it or going for it. I, I went for it because that's historically what happened. Um, the problem is, within the first 30 minutes of the game, you, you meet 100 characters. Uh, one minute you fight them, the next minute you're doing a mission with them. Mm. Because you're pro-shogunite or anti-shogunite. It doesn't really matter to me until like the third act where you have to pick one. But even your enemies are your friends, and your friends are your enemies. It's just, uh, I, don't, I thought there would be more consequences as far as picking what. Uh, I haven't really noticed anything. I was friends with all of them at the end. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, yeah, the story was a bit wild. But overall, um, how they had the map and to find things and discover things, it wasn't just like a typical like Assassin's Creed game, where there's icons everywhere. As you explore the world, you unlock them slowly. There's nothing to climb up or whatever. And uh, when you help people in missions, more map gets exposed. They show you certain things. I wasn't overwhelmed with collectibles. And they were kind of like in the direction you were going anyway. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was pretty cool how they did that that map. I wish more games had an open world map like that. I think it's easier to understand. Mm -hmm. 
I was sort of hovering over getting it in the. Oh, I would definitely get shop. it. It's now my game of the year. It's better than Hell Divers. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the combat, everything. I'm telling you, everything about that game is is really interesting. It took me two hours to make my to, to make my character, which you know I I can't. <laughs> I wish they didn't do those anymore. I just wish you just gave me a generic character, because even in Skyrim or games like that. I find a helmet. I'm just rock. I'm rocking a helmet. Who cares what it looked like? It doesn't really matter to me. I I expected in that for you to put on the Raiden hat so no one could see your face. I was bro. I was going through different outfits and then that game trying to figure out what I look cool. My character looks so good looking. I didn't put anything on it but a little bandana. Her <laughs> hair was luxurious. Yeah, she was great, bro. She was beautiful. So when I kept her, I made her. I made her a female. What? I gave her a little, little bit, a little bit of a tattoo, like a little bit of a. You know, renegade kind of character in my own mind. Where was this tattoo? Um, right arm, half chest to right arm. So when you wear the uh, some of the outfits have just like half, they're half on, half off. You can see your tattoo. Wow, yeah, it's pretty cool. This would be a very dangerous lady in the eighteen hundreds. Oh yeah, that's that's what I made her, bro. Edgy. Well, watch out for this one. It's super edgy. So what else? So you've done that. Bit of Hell Divers, no doubt. A little bit of... um, What was the other game? Dead Island 2. Dead Island 2. That's it. Is that you cleared out? Oh, no. I have so many. I still have Far oh, Cry dear. 6. I have Horizon West. Oh, that you've been playing, though? No, that's it. That's it. You've not played Horizon back- West? I have a bunch of games that I have to just pick one now. I just feel keep like going the moment might have passed for that game. <laughs> Probably, but I still have. To, I have it. I got to finish it. I mean, not finish it, start it, and finish it. That probably was, won't take me that long. That was probably about over. That was over two years ago. We talked about me playing that. Yeah, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's what happens to the backlog, man. And then when a better game comes out, sometimes you got to jump on those first. You know, I didn't plan to play Rise of the Ronin first, and I ordered Stellar Blade. So if that don't come in soon, then that'll be on the wait list too. OG Tom's on last week. He was he had a long list of games to talk about, but he he was saying that he's loving Stellar Blade. Yeah. No, look, the demo was amazing. I played a demo like crazy. I can see he's gonna launch a range of flesh colored silicon controller grips with the Stellar Blade logo on. Are you signing mm-hmm. up for that or no? Hundred percent. <laughs> I'll pay extra for the extra jiggle physics. Fine, <laughs> not a problem. Not a problem. Mumsy, fetch the silicon mold. We mm-hmm. may have just. Oh no, I was I was gonna say something, but I'm I'm not. <laughs> I am not. Oh, Going and then there. I found out because I don't really, I don't even know how I even got this news. Uh, just randomly popped up. I took a picture of it. So I'm gonna on a, if this comes out, I'll play this one too. Um, Puppet Combo. Mm. They are releasing the Glass Staircase on May 24th. So that's next Friday. Oh God! Or You're this not Friday. Finishing anything? Are you anytime soon? I've been finishing a lot of stuff. It's just a, now my order has been kind of uh, whacked out, but I did put in Tormented Souls, which I got two years ago. It's the, the the CDs in the PS5. It's ready to be played today. Well, let's get you. I have to. Point. I have to get the ball rolling. Well, let me bore you with what I've been playing. Well, no, let me do a little pickups as well. Yesterday, I was in game checking out their fifty percent sale. I think I found Resident Evil Four for PS5. That was very cheap price, so I thought, yeah, I'll get that. Um, while I was queuing, I was looking at all the different controllers on the back shelf, and then my eyes rested upon a WD Black SSD. Oh, yeah. I'm sure everyone's going to message in and say, well, there's faster ones, but do you know what? It does the job. It's in between, indeterminable from the built-in PlayStation mm-hmm. internal memory. So do you know what? It ticks the box. It was right there and then. If I'd gone home and thought about it, I probably never would have got around to it. What'd you get? One T or two T? One T. 
Well, I've never really struggled with managing the hard drive, but at least now I can I can just let my belt off a little bit. I can just relax. I've bought the I've bought the two size up trousers. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm ready to become a larger gentleman. Yeah. I can gorge at the all you can eat buffet now. I'll I'm give you my old it. clothes. Fine. As That's you still come good. down, I come up. Yeah, ex- ex- yeah. We exchange wardrobes. Mm-hmm. You become me and I become you. You can keep the overall though. Uh, I think you I'll take the hoodies. One strap on, ripped abs, mm-hmm. you're wearing a white Pepsi shirt, logos kind of faded off a little bit. There's some rips in it so people can see your ripped sinew. Mm-hmm. You've got a cap on backwards with your sort of little ginger quiff hanging out. I'll be honest with you. I would want to smother myself all over you like butter on bread. Yeah, it's good. Especially on toast. A little warmer. Thing is, it'd be quite a chewy meal because of those abs. Mm-hmm. You like a cupid face. You've got to, you just got to beat him to get a little, little bit tenderized, you know? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Do you like video games, podcasts, and reminiscing? I'm actor, video game writer, and total sweetie pie, Connor Savage McCabe, and on each episode of Call Me By Your Game, I sit down with a guest for an intimate look at a special game from their past. Did you and your dad beat Spyro the Dragon over the holidays? Or was Halo 4 the one thing that united your roommates during your senior year of college? Stories like these are what Call Me By Your Game is about. From video game content creator Janet Garcia to Hades voice actor Courtney Venez, I interview wonderful comedians and game industry friends about these memories. Check us out wherever you get your podcasts, and maybe someday you'll call me by your game. Just get round oh. and pound me. Pound mm-hmm. that meat. Tenderize yeah. it. Tenderize it. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so there's what I picked up. And what I've been playing, I went on a digital splurge two or three weeks ago, and I picked up... That big sale, right? Yeah, picked up yeah. one manager. It was a good sale, actually. It was. I got Robocop in it, which... I want to like, but can't. They need to patch that. I want to enjoy it. It's a very special game to me. Why? What's wrong with it? Every time the people talk to each other in cutscenes, the camera flicks the model inside out. Really? Yeah. I don't have. I had no issues with Robocop. Not one. That's weird. I thought it was great. I really thought it did a good job. I wanted to really enjoy it. I was hyped. I I didn't have not one crash or anything, actually. It just when was... the characters talk to each other, just for maybe a quarter of a second before the camera turns to the other person that's talking, it literally goes full uh, Pan Am from... Oh, Starbuckle wow, on the moment. back seat. Yeah. You're oh, in, wow. You're in, you're the, in Pan Am. Yeah. So you're inside, you're inside the middle of Robocop, but you're not. But then you are, and then you're not. And then the person he speaks to, you're inside them in the middle of them where it flips inside out and then back again, but then you're not. That's I, so strange. So I had to delete. I was like, I don't I can't let you do this to me. Because the game feels great. No, you can't play like that. That's that's just, that's that's wild. That's where I was at. So anyway, F1 manager twenty three. It's a little bit harder than the previous one. And I know twenty four's come out, so <laughs> bad timing, but it's it's aged well. It's a little bit more difficult. And a little bit more challenging than the previous one. But, you know, I'm enjoying the struggle. So I think by the time I get to season two, things will be great. I've been enjoying Helldivers 2. And I'm a weirdo. I know you're like, that's not how you level up, bro. And I know I, know I don't. I know you don't. But I don't care. Because I just like to go thin terminated numbers. I just like the chaos of the whole thing. And we, mm-hmm. me and you were speaking off air. <laughs> At the minute, everyone gets 500 kg bombs at the minute. It's a stratagem that everyone can just have extra mm-hmm. in the bag. And we were talking how you throw the stratagem down and then this almost sort of very thin sort of almost looks like a fence stake just sort mm-hmm. of slides in, stays it's... right next to you. Just and First you time I just... saw that, I was like, what is that? It looks like a glitch. 
you look like a glitch. I'm like, what 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 that just happened to me, you know? That's Next right. thing you know, I'm like, oh, throw me in, boys. I just died. It's a 500 kg bomb delivers sure was. in the thinnest, most delicate payload yep. ever. And it just slides in next to you as if it's like your best friend. You can't yeah, it's mate, true. It's just slips the, in. The strangest the stratagem ever. How are you, mate? Oh, by the way, bombshell. I've been sleeping with your wife. Boom, mm-hmm. 500 kg bomb. <laughs> That's it, yeah. It's true. <laughs> I thought my game glitched out. I was like, what was that? You know? And I kept talking about it. And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't do anything. You ended with those stratagem? No. It it was my brother, like a my brother's like, oh, yeah, angle. I threw one to help you. Well, what should you throw? Next thing I know, dead. <laughs> Instant, dead, death, done. Everything around me was dead. i tell you one I've been enjoying as well, and this was free for everybody to try out, and I've never really tried it before because I think I've unlocked it, but I've not used it, was the gas strike. Gas strike is, cute. It's amazing. Gas strike and it's like is- 60 seconds. You can throw it every 60 seconds. It's the most undersold weapon it is. going. Don't get too close to it. But my goodness gracious me, I saw an outrageous number rack up in the yellow thing. I was like, oh, I didn't yeah. Throw that. It was just like, boom. It's really key, man. It's it's really underrated. It's I expected it to be less deadly than a napalm cluster bomb strike, for example. It's It makes those look like a kindergarten fight. It does. No, it's, it's crazy. It's really it's crazy. Um, what else have we been playing? Oh, here's one. Dave the Diver. Yeah, it's free. On PS Plus. They have a Godzilla now. Dave the Diver with Godzilla. You should try it. It's it's your cup of tea. I yeah. don't even think you're good enough at games for Dave the Diver. What? <laughs> It's a load of different games wrapped up. So you got to run a restaurant. You then got to serve in the restaurant. And in the day, you go diving, catching fish to serve and deliver to people on at the table. Mm-hmm. But then there's also mysterious things going on in the sea as well. It's really? quite the game. I mean, I saw a trailer of it, but didn't really... Um... I know, but it, it's not a game that the trailer's going to do justice to. I mean, yeah, I can, I can take a look at it, I guess. You, your challenge is to have that platinum by next time we speak. So in a week. <laughs> How long's the game? For you, probably a couple of hours. For everybody else, probably 20 hours. I don't actually know how long Dave the Diver is. Mm. Ever the... Uh, Hard-hitting researcher as I am. Is there anything else going on? Oh, hang on. Yeah, let's get this out there. Let's let's deal with this community news right now, the bombshell. Mm -hmm. If you're an early adopter, as you listen to this, I'd imagine right now or close to now, or maybe it's happened, depends when you listen to this. If you listen to this two years from now because you've just downloaded the back (laughs) catalogue, You ain't got your early adopter box. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. That's just how this works. But to everybody else who got involved early doors, became an early adopter, supported the show financially, I'm very grateful to you. As early adopters, you get the full upper suite of treats just for getting on board early, even at the lowest funding price available. And you should now be. Felt like President Trump then. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and- <laughs> it's the greatest adopter kit ever. You know, with the was a box. <laughs> be the greatest. It's fine box. He's he's op- they're gonna be opening that. They're gonna be blown away. There's cassette in there, there's exclusive wall art, there's signed drivel. Um there's the food item I mentioned. If you paid attention, you're getting one of those as well. So I just can't wait for social to be flooded with people sharing their boxes, wearing their T-shirts. Just generally just dripped in UCP bling. Mm-hmm. We've got the drip. A drip, yeah. To everyone else, the show remains free and always will be. But if you want to support, just click the link at the bottom of the show notes. You make... You make us all very happy men. 
And I don't think... I don't think there's a better feeling than making than making these men happy. Like, look at Bobby now. I look at him. He's purring like a feral cat that's just been given its first tinned cat food. It's mm-hmm. been living on Subway Rat uh, yeah. for, for most of its life. It's 10 years old. Huge upgrade. Big upgrade. In fact, do you know what? I like you so much, I'm tickling you under your chin. I'm going to give you a lick of fresh tuna. My oh, my God. God. This yeah. is amazing. And they're going to rack you up a line of catnip. That's it. And that fresh water from a from a filtered uh, water bu- jug. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Who's better than a cat, bro? Do you know? They've got it going on. Get they you better a three, than three tier sort of cat apartment inside mm-hmm. your inside your house. Yeah, unbelievable. Like the Downton Abbey of cat boxes. Right, it's the news. Are you ready for this, Bobby? Because I'm, I am. I'm I'm lubed up. Uh, and I'm leaking. We scoured hey. the very darkest regions of the internet to bring you the latest stories. First up, a safe bet. A new report has just dropped that claims Activision's upcoming 2024 game uh, Call of Duty title will be included in Games Pass on day one. The Wall Street Journal is the source on this one, with the outlet claiming that the plan is expected to be announced as the company's annual showcase next month. About a week ago, Xbox's Sarah Bond doubled down on Microsoft's commitment to Games Pass, reiterating that Xbox will bring in its titles to the service across the whole slate. Of course, today's report backs that up, even if Bond didn't state Call of Duty specifically. Over in a a separate article at The Verge, Tom Warren says Activision is currently targeting a late October release for what is expected to be Gulf of War-themed Call of Duty Black Ops title. Warren has also mentioned his previous report that Microsoft may be debating another Games Pass price rise to accommodate day one Call of Duty arrivals, but that hasn't been confirmed at this stage. Of course, what has been all but confirmed is that we're getting Call of Duty direct live stream right after Xbox's main showcase in June. So that's where you can expect to see the team officially lay out its Call of Duty 2024 plans. So we're taking today's report info with a pinch of salt until the official confirmation comes in from Microsoft themselves. Bobby, we knew this was going to happen. There was talk of it not happening. I also still think it's going to be available to buy on other systems because they all signed that exclusive little tete-a-tete between themselves during the whole court proceedings. Is Call of Duty inhabiting on Games Pass going to get more people to buy Games Pass, or is it just going to make the people that already have Games Pass happier if they play COD? Make them happy if they play COD. Hmm. How is this going to... Because the bad chic of it, Microsoft Activision signed a deal for 10 years mm-hmm. to bring Call of Duty to the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> Do you think <laughs> so? You think Call of that... Duty or Medal of Honor style frontline era called you know that kind of graphical. Well, that's what I don't know. Are we going to get like a specific version for the Switch where it's really great, or are we going to get nothing, or are we going to get it on? You're going to get two? Uh, a six six little uh, gaming chip exclusive. So depending on what map you want, you put that into the switch to load up so you don't have to have any issues with anything else you know 50 game cartridges yeah little game cartridges yeah and they and all the they all save your data to do some kind of cloud systems so you don't have to worry about it but when you want to load up a map you just put that little disc in that little cartridge in. do you think they're gonna bother or do you think that was getting themselves ready for maybe the switch 2 even the switch 2 i mean even if the switch 2 comes out how's it gonna work how is the Switch 2 going to be any better than a Switch? It's getting better graphics. Oh, how much better graphics can you get from the Switch? You can probably get on the back doors of the PS4 Pro, which is arguably on a screen of that size, maybe indistinguishable from PS5. So, on a cartridge? Well... Look, I don't work for Nintendo, but I would say... Yeah, but is a cartridge better than a, C- than a, than a CD? You'd think it would be instantaneous. There's no need to maybe do as much install. Maybe you can call down from the card, and because it's almost like a little SSD, maybe it might be as quick. So why did they remove... Why did they go to the disc format on the GameCube? 
because it was cheap. I was only the that the CD is better than the cartridge. Back in the day, it might have been, but is it now? What if they stream it? Well, that's how they're solving some of the issues with the Switch's graphical flaws on some games. But if you haven't got good internet... Man of Nintendo think... just contacts... um, What's it called? Steam Deck? What, and sends them some Nintendo Switch? Listen, stickers? we want to make a Steam Deck partnership with Nintendo. And it'll be a Nintendo Color Steam Deck. It'll have all the Nintendo stuff in it. Would you want that? I I mean, there's ways to do it. I had a, f- a friend who basically has a, a Steam Deck with everything you want. You need to stop this friend immediately because it's people like that that are killing sort of mom and pop video shops. They're killing the mobile video rental guy. You are right now putting Stingray higher up the endangered animal list than a polar bear. He'll still be there. Stingray doesn't have a mating partner anymore. He's only had one spawn, Ray, that's Wayne, that survived. It's all right. There'll be others out there. It's not going to end. I just think it's incredible that you could just load up the Nintendo console, the Switch on the Steam Deck, and play everything on that, and then dock it. Did it feel a bit dirty? No, it didn't. It felt great. It felt amazing. It felt it felt amazing. He even has Game Pass on that thing. So you can play Call of Duty on it. Uh yeah, because it's it's a PC, you know. He just put a, he just put Game Pass on it. And loads up Game Pass. That's it. His whole Xbox got, library you, is in there. Have you gone to the dark side? Have you got a Steam Deck yet? Uh no, because I don't. I don't think I'll ever use it really. Mm. When I'm I, on vacation. I don't play video games. I'm on vacation. I'm doing other things. I, so I don't. I don't really need a handheld. I don't. I've been getting legs out of the portal. I've still got the Switch kicking around. Don't get me wrong, and you know, I it's great. No, the Switch is good for Nintendo stuff, like. But the, the Metroids are fine. Is, Zelda was fine. The portal gives me the access to my PS5 library that I necessarily wouldn't be able to play all of the time because I have my little dedicated experience. So to grind away on bits and bobs in the background on the portal, which has been, I'll play Hell Divers on that bad boy. Admittedly, yeah, could, easily. I was in the Discord the other day, and I think Seal Master Elliot was asking me about the portal, and I was like, well, you know. I was close to sending it back initially, and then I fiddled around with some settings, and I bought some different wires because my I didn't realize that Ethernet cables have like a ten year lifespan. My Ethernet cable is like twenty years old. Ship that out, change some settings. It works flawlessly. It's no, almost... yeah, when when I played it, I was like, wow. I mean, it looked it looked phenomenal, and it it looked super smooth. Mm. I just don't think I'd be carrying that around everywhere I go. Oh. Uh. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, like well, I don't. Where am I going to go to the park? I don't want to go play video games in the park. I want to no, go to the park for something else. You know, <laughs> I can't or I'm between on a location. long airplane ride. I don't know. You see, for the long airplane ride, I'd probably take the switch. Like, I see people, and I see there's a need for it, obviously because it is good. Right? I'm not saying I'm against it. I mean, yeah, handheld games are great. I just personally don't have time or to go anywhere and start carrying a portable video game system now. If I'm going to go to the airport or something like that. portable video game systems, are they a step too far, generally? No, not really. Look at it this way. When I was Only a kid, you the Game Boy home. was essential. When I was punished, they didn't know about that Game Boy. They forgot about that Game Boy. I had oh, that Game it... Boy under the covers playing Nintendo. I was like, wow, this is like, oh, I'm punished. But I, got my, I got my Game Boy. Couldn't take that away from me. You know what I mean? It's still something, or like, you know, you're like a younger kid, your parents watch the TV, your older brother got a TV, or I have a Switch, I have to play it somewhere else, right? It's, and it's good, it's good. But, like, I just can't see myself now walking around with a bag to carry, first of all, Steam Deck's heavy, it's heavy, it's a, it's a big boy system, it's heavy, to carry that around. 
because I'm going on vacation. Or well, this is my, this is where I was trying to get to. Are you the next level of video game addict when you have to take around your little bag of like get you buys? It, it is uh, no, it, I don't are, think I ever was. Portable gaming for a grown up now, a Nicorette patch. Listen, we're going to go into a point where there's going to be other phones that can do everything a Steam Deck could do, including make a phone call. Right? Once that happens, the technology is there. I know it's, this is going to be outrageous, but I bet you can make a phone call off a of Steam Deck. You know what? I'm not, I bet you could because they have WhatsApp, and WhatsApp is an someone, actual thing. You? Yeah, so you could Teams. I'm, listen, I'm sure there's a way. Zoom? You can do it. Probably. Discord? I mean, it's a PC. Xbox so if I can, Games if I, Pass voice chat. Bro, if you can download Zoom on the Steam Deck and have Wi-Fi and make a call, you have a phone. So, I'm, I mean, it's there, right? He opened up his Outlook email on that bad boy and was answering emails from the Steam Deck. Oh. It's, in, it's a little PC. It's like... That's it's vulgar. Like a, yeah, but I'll tell you something, man. It's it's hooked up. I don't know what kind of terabyte card he got in there, but he had loads of stuff in there. So I guess if you like games, like if that's all you had and you can dock it and play it home and then you go on a, you know, your little adventures from work or wherever you got to go and you bring it with you, fine, it's cool. It's great. But I wouldn't, I just don't need, what, I need to What's get an acceptable, it. let's say you lived in a world where you decided you needed the Steam Deck. You work working mm-hmm. nights. Something comes up where you're like, yeah, this could really work for me. Or any portable gaming device. Mm-hmm. What would be an acceptable man-like carry bag for you? Let's say you had to take around your systems in there and you wanted to keep them nice, mm-hmm. but you also wanted to look cool. The man about town. Would you go with gaming branded tat? Or would you go for like a little leather carry all you know describe to me your gaming man bag just the jansport book bag is that just it just keep it simple bag. yeah i don't even like the whatever can i cannot fit my my two pockets in front of my pants or my or my little vest or my hoodie we're not bringing it i hate carrying things bro i hate carrying bags i don't like to carry anything this is strapped across you like a tactical vest. Yeah, I mean, if I had to, uh, just a book bag, if I had to. Just a regular book bag. What about those? I was in a charity shop recently, and I, I saw something. I didn't know what it was. But after a Google, I realized that people are buying tactical vests that are fake. They're just sort of like thick fabric with the yeah. Velcro strips on the front. What about if you stuck Velcro to the back of your Steam Deck and just had it sort of clagged on the front, almost like a weapons System. I think then it's time that you need to just sit down with someone and just talk about life. <laughs> just in general, like just about the, everything, you know, getting your mind right. Maybe it's a little bit too much, I think. Yeah, it's not my mumsy. I don't know who's it. It's just, just been it. Yeah. Don't keep the switch. I don't know who's that is. Maybe use glue gun, get the Velcro off. Mm-hmm. The, I guess I'll scrap that plan. Okay, what's the next bit of news, lover boy? Uh, a link to the pictures, because we're still doing this. The Legend yes. of Zelda live action movie has uh, been in the headlines quite a bit over the past few weeks, and now Sony has chimed in, reiterating that uh, just how massive it's going to be, thanks to Shigeru Miyamoto's strong vision of this particular world. I think my Japanese pronouncing of names has gotten better because of Rise of the Ronin. I think his name's Shigeru. You know what? Could be. That could be the accent picking out. I'm not really sure, but I felt good with the last name. I felt confident, you know? Uh, yeah, I, I think, think if you say that. it wrong, but have confidence in it, you'll people let it slide. Um, I smell to crack in your confidence. A little bit. It's probably just a stutter. <laughs> when I read out loud, that's what happens. I don't know what my um, excuse is. Here's exactly what Sony Motion Pictures chairman Todd Rothman had to say during an interview with Deadline, uh, noting how the Super Mario Bros. movie also benefited from its uh, collaboration with Miyamoto uh, and labeling him a true genius when it comes to Zelda, as he now knows the world he understands 
Uh, he says, because the movie is being developed and made in the closest possible collaboration with Nintendo game designer, he's a true genius in that world. And it's really his strong vision that is motivating. Uh, he created it and understands it thoroughly. You only have to look at the results of Super Mario Brothers to see. Um, in an original announcement of the live action movie, it's revealed Sony would be co-financing the film with Avi Ard, Ar- Arad, yeah. uh, chairman of Arad Productions. Uh, working alongside Miyamoto, where Ball, the Kingdom of Planet of the Apes, will be directing his uh, big screen outing. He's previously gone on record on record saying that he's uh, been following Link's adventures throughout his life. He's also acknowledged the importance of a series and wants to fulfill people's greatest desires. Two things. Mm-hmm. Nintendo financing, uh, Sony financing a Nintendo movie. What mm-hmm. world are we living in, and how does it smell to you? We're living in a world of the Asian community getting together to make a video game movie that they wanted to make. <laughs> Would you be happy if this film was like The NeverEnding Story or Labyrinth? Or I don't want prefer, that. What do you want? All no, I don't want the Labyrinth. Um, if you're gonna make us, if you're gonna make Zelda's costume, not Zelda's Link's costume, look anywhere like. David Bowie's tights, then... Oh, no, I wasn't thinking that. I was thinking more... Oh, that's what I world. thought immediately. As soon as you no. say Labyrinth, I just think of that. That was the that's wildest costume in the world. <laughs> and my man I'm was thinking... so happy with that outfit. It showed off his finest sides of his personality. Sure did. I don't think Link's going to have that somehow. I think that Link's probably his front window is going to have less things on the shelf. On the Here's market. my problem. I think if you put any style of Link's uniform in it, you're either one, going to be David Bowie, or two, you're going to be Carol Hughes in Robin Hood Men in Tights. I just don't see it. You know, I don't know. I just don't see a live act. I like listen, the Mario Brothers movie for what it was, it was animated. It was good. I enjoyed it. All right. It's I don't think you have to go live action with this. Cause I would like it. I would if you're gonna do it, I would like it more dark fantasy, like more Lord of the Rings style. Oh. Then uh I don't know. What's a like Princess Bride? Yeah, I know it's a kid movie. I, I, I mean, you don't have to be for kids. Like the Mario Brothers movie, I, th- I think everyone of all ages could enjoy. It, especially if they had kids, they can take them to see it. And all right, it was good for everybody. But this is, I think, Zelda a little bit more. Talk to me about boy. key Zelda gaming moments that have to be in the movie. I don't it know. Have to be in the movie. It has to be in the movie. Yeah, if you're you're sat there and you've got like. You've got Zelda Bingo in front of you. Yeah. So well, maybe instead of green walking... Tunix, one, what what are listen, the other things that you I need? don't want pushing a bush and you find a staircase. I'm not doing that. That's a bit wild for me. What about him breaking a pot and finding a rupee? No. Is one that's... rupee short no. of the shield? I think it'll be pretty cool, let's say... First of all, if you're going to find the sword, I don't want you going to a shop and getting... I want to... You're going to find some old lady out of nowhere, like... Lady of the Lake style Excalibur. To find this woman, she's going to give you a sword. That's the sword you're going to use. Special sword. Cool. Great. That it has to be in there Trump. for sure. That's yeah. the sword, the special sword. It's cool. the sword. It's the greatest sword of all time. <laughs> um, it slashes and dashes. Then that's what I want, you know? Um, in a cave, let's say, you know, he's getting aggravated, as can't find a way out of this cave. He throws a bomb into a wall. Hilarious. Like, all right, shortcut. I'm smart. You know, if you had to do it like that, I don't want a fairy in there. Fairy fountain in there. Um, no, see, that's the thing. You see what for me, I think fallout is a better video game series from TV than the last of us. Mm, I agree. Because the last of us is like, you're playing the game and you're watching it in live action. So yeah. you kind of can expect what like what's going to happen. They took the story and they adapted it. Fallout is just set in the universe. So there's lots of cool little Easter egg, but it had its own little story. I Which think if they want, right, 
Yeah, I, I thought it was phenomenal. I think if they went that route, okay, so you know the world of Zelda. You know about Hyrule. You're, you know all about it because you're a fan of the game. And little Easter eggs here and there, and it's his own journey. It doesn't have to be the same journey that you already played, but something along the line. Yeah, you got to rescue Zelda. Copy. You got to fight. the. Okay, cool. But put it where it's interesting to new people and old fans alike. But I just I... think it would be better in a darker setting. Are you ready for my pitch? Mm-hmm. You've seen Neverending Story. You know, like, in he's got, like, this little eighties kid's life and he's getting bullied at school, all that sort mm-hmm. of stuff. What if we take the book and replace no. it with an old video game console? No. And a game cart no, no. older? I want this to be an actual world. But the kid goes into the world when he's playing no. the game. He is that character. No. You, That's Ready Player not, One. I'm not doing it's that. It's not the same. It's never ending story. You're not. Normally, you let me pitch. I normally pitch. You receive the idea. And I can, I've normally been able to sell you on some of the most far 100% outcomes. every game. You, I've loved it. This, I'm not feeling this at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want Fred Savage reading a book going into this world. No, I don't want that. I don't want someone from 1986 going into a, a world of Hyrule wearing tight little green shorts. I don't want that. Mumsy, burn it, burn it, burn it, burn the whole monologue. No, I don't care. If 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 Bobby's not buying it, no, I don't think we it. need to understand why there's a high rule or why no, this is what's happening. This is the world. This is our hero. Let's go for it. Why do things have to be explained? I didn't want to do it explained. I just wanted to add that little just that little sheen of video game sort of you could be at home doing this yourself. It's the kid's imagination, but then you then you start questioning: Is it because this world is starts to become yeah, more real? Yeah, but that's real. the problem. Like, why like Fallout didn't have to explain none of that? Is is what it is. It's this is the world, bro. This is what's happening. Okay, so super. So did Mario? Did I have to know that they were plumbers and they were in New York City and they found a, a pipe? All right, it was cool. Was it necessary? No. Okay. I never once said, man, how did this human guy get into this world where he's jumping on turtles all day? It is what it is. How would you feel if you woke up as a plumber in Mario's world, you know, the mushrooms, the whole bag of It'd be wild, man. Because what are those toads? Like, that'll freak me out. And then you have large turtles you're trying to attack you, but are they? They're literally just walking around. You could just easily avoid them. You don't have to kill anything in Mario. No, you don't. You don't have to kill nothing. Just keep, just jump over them. What about the first enemy? What about the bosses? Well, you have to get past them. You just, the screen doesn't go any further. You have to. I feel sorry for you, but you have to. You have to. So the minimum you can get away with in Mario is looking like, I don't know, like a 12 person serial killer. Think about it. Yeah. But, people, the first thing people do in Mario is they commit murder. They jump on an on this toad like, uh, turtle like creature. They don't even know. First of all, it doesn't spit at you. Doesn't run at you. Doesn't try to do anything to you. It's just walking to the left, and you are walking to the right. And the first thing everybody does is jump on this bad boy and send him on his way down the screen. It's a dangerous world though, because it one is. touch. Of a turtle's nail on his yeah, foot. Yeah, but let's just say hypothetically. What is it? A toenail. I totally forgot. <laughs> it's a toenail. That's what it's called. One it's little <laughs> infinitesimal scrape of a yeah. turtle's toenail, and you're dead. Yeah, but but that's but that's just a video game. So if I woke and up and realized, jump forward with your arms out out yeah, of the TV screen, off the TV screen. I mean. What if you were woke up in a world like that and now you're in it, right? And then you see this turtle thing. And let's just say you don't let's just say you don't see it. It just surprised you and you just it hit you. All you did was fall on the floor. You get back up. You know, now you're in a 3D world, right? You know what you could do? Just walk around them. What if it was only a 2D world? Like you could only walk left to right. Mm -hmm. Then just jump over him. You could jump about 15 feet in the air, I think. 
and Mario. But what if he mistimed it and then jumped on his mate that was flying up and down and his wing literally just glanced across your face? Then you're done. And if you were big boy Mario, that's okay because mm-hmm. you shrink down to little boy Mario. Yeah, big boy Mario is more aggressive than little boy Mario. When you're little boy Mario, you're more, uh-oh, got to be careful, right? Big boy Mario does, doesn't care. Big boy Mario is a savage. Big boy Mario is Dr. Jekyll. <laughs> He's just savaging and killing. Her. When you're when you're when you're Mister Hyde, you know you just um. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Let me just run around you, you know, but, or jump but, over things. And then when you get the mushroom again, <laughs> I'll kill everybody back. But then, if you happen to just glance your hand across a flower in this world, you suddenly are able to emit fireballs from your crop. Damn, yeah. Which is also um, crazy. Do you think that expends calories, or do you think it's just one of those things we have to accept? Well, usually if you have spicy food, um, your metabolism kicks in a lot more. So probably being able to shoot fire out of the palms of your hand in a white jumper. Does it come out of the palm of his hand, though, or does it come directly from his crotch? Uh, it depends what, what game uh, you're playing. But I think they didn't have the graphical fidelity to show the palm. Yes. So it just looked like a bunch of fire nuts coming out of his crotch. <laughs> fire nuts? Mm-hmm. I didn't think this is where a conversation about the uh, Zelda movie would take us, but I'm so glad it did. I think we should do a poll. Do you want this like a dark fantasy? I mean, is Lord of the Rings? I mean, I guess it is kind of dark. But yeah, I mean, you, I I would prefer I it think, like that. I think I don't think a, I want a kitty bop, beautiful green grass and a beautiful sun. No, I need something a little bit more. What if it was what if it was Ocarina of Time? I, I never played that. It's too late to play it now, but it's a it shame. It definitely is. I would never go back, probably. Wow. I played the first two on the, in the NES. I played yeah. Link to the Past on Super Nintendo. Yeah. And that was it. And then I played Breath of the Wild. Did you like that? I thought it was great. Mm. It was fun. I had a good time with it. I thought it was interesting. The se- the sequel is just like, to me, like just an expansion, which is all right. I mean, it is what it is. I didn't expect it to be groundbreaking game of the year. Well, that year, it maybe was. Let's Think get this up. Like if I wanted an, a Metroid game, I would kind of want it similar to like Alien atmospheric or maybe even aliens i guess because there's lots of enemies on the screen but uh you know something like that i wouldn't want metroid set in like i don't know galaxy quest you know or star trek universe Mm. i just feel like it just has more of a horror theme to it so like when i think of like Legend of Zelda, I think of it more like a like a dark fantasy game. Like, okay, perfect example. Like Legend. You ever see Legend with Tom Cruise? Yeah. So Legend's kind of a dark. It was a weird movie, right? But it's kind of dark, but it's kind of light. You, you, there's unicorn thing in there. There's light in the dark. So it kind of plays to like kind of both worlds. But it was it was too dark for kids, but too light for adults. They couldn't really get it together. Uh, that's now that's where I've been trying to pitch the Zelda movie. That 80s gritty vibe. Mm -hmm. No, I definitely love the 80s gritty vibe. 100% got your back. Okay. I want it like that. Yeah. Don't burn page 8 till 20. Yeah, I would like it like that, but I don't want it going to like Labyrinth style. I want it more going towards Lord of the Rings. I feel like this is the move that's going to make no one happy. Uh, community corrections. Did we miss anything? Do you have an opinion or take on the news we missed? I know HG Games jumped in there and uh, threw some stats and figures at us, um, which I actually need to digest and think about. But thank you for that. I think you're probably uh, right in terms of the Helldivers uptake and people not having the accounts in some countries. Absolutely agree. Um, but Bobby, if the collected masses wanted to get in contact like HG Games did and tell us that George, it's dangerous that you've got a podcast at this point, <laughs> you've lost touch with reality, 
you don't know you don't know anything anymore and we want to make an example of you how would they make an example of me they can email us yeah. at questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com people have dm me and they said i say that extremely fast one word like a big nigga cheese uh so it's questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com they can send us a dm on instagram they can reach us on x or they can join the discord and go into the community corrections sub or chat and talk about it there beautiful the best bit the discord completely free one section of it, the unglorious, if you want to step up your life and have, here's one perk I didn't know I'd agree to, a monthly, maybe a quarterly board meeting with us. They dial into a Zoom call. We're here. I don't know if we play some video games. We talk nonsense. I'll probably show my picture of uh, hamster mummies that I've created. Why not? Mm-hmm. Why not? It's a bit messy, but then... Things get a bit better as you get further into the process. So, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Nice distraction. Nice use of the, some of the Warhammer paints I collected when I was 12. What more could you want from life? Yeah, nothing really. If you wanted to really embody this show in one way, there's really only one person. Now, we all hang around and we associate ourselves with greatness but let's face it this is stingray show Mm -hmm. i think it's time i think it's time are you ready i am i'll let him in it's time for a peek in what we affectionately call stingray's boot what's nestled between a dodgy copy of battle friend or this week uh these are the new release highlight ray i don't think you updated the date you flaming nincompoop um let me do it for you these are new release highlights for May 20th to May 26th. Listeners, these are out digital or physical or will be by the time this podcast in your feed, but could be region dependent. I struggled and fell over uh, the intro. Ray didn't update the script. I'm blaming him. I'm basically blaming myself. I I feel a little bit beleaguered. It's been a tough week. And mm-hmm. I look at how I'm seeing Ray this week and i'm not seeing ray at all now he's got a cousin that cousin has you know when you're a kid you know there's certain franchises that you maybe get into this particular character got very into thomas the tank engine uh, Mm -hmm. as a child he then got really into trains he would look at trains he would write the numbers down as they came through farmerton station as he got a little bit older, he started playing Train Simulator on his console. That's the sort of character he is. Now, he's a popular YouTuber, um, famous on TikTok for uploading videos of himself wearing uh, a selfie stick taped to his head. Now, I don't know if you know this, but this particular member of the Ray family, we know him in the village of Farmerton as Rail, but you may call him Rail Ray. Rail Ray. Rail Ray. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you think about him? Uh, well, I just met him. Yeah. Um, so I don't really know much, but I'm sure after the show, we'll have a little bit of a, you know, just good to know him. Okay. Seems um, like a nice chap. He looks normal, actually. Whoa. Yeah. I don't know if he has that same ability uh, right now. He looks like just a normal dude. You know, you never know. Uh, Stingray does not look normal, but he never does. Well, this week I'm seeing Wayne as Rail Ray's pack lunch and thermos. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, he's not everyone's cup of tea, but I think he's a Marmite sandwich. Oof, that's rough. How are you seeing the Mighty Ray this week? Did you ever play the video game Radioactive Dwarves from the uh, sewers? I can't imagine that's on my list of games. 
I'll tell you something. I played it. Um, it's actually quite challenging. Uh, that's what Wayne looks like. A small, sadistic-looking dwarf with a full red beard, uh, toxic green eyes, uh, very feral-looking dude. What, what makes what makes a diminutive gentleman like that vindictive? Probably the amount of toxic chemicals he's probably indigested in, ingested into uh, the sewer. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. He is uh, definitely been poisoned. Now, how are you seeing Sting then? If that's how you see him, wait. Sting, you know what? He has a very extremely tight pair of brown tights. Um, beautiful manscaped abs, uh, oil down, with probably a two liter bulge uh, in his pants. And I wrote, and I said leader on purpose, so the uh, UK community and everyone else around the world who doesn't use uh, whatever Americans use <laughs> understands. What do leader. you call it? Because we call it the imperial system, but you yeah, I think we use the metric over here. Um, That's centimeters, though. But their game was rough. Well, I don't think we would use whatever. Is, what would you say two liters is? Well, it's whatever you would call it. Like when you get gas, it? what do you put gas in? Well, we would liters what? now. We get gallons. We do it by gallons. You do it by so liters? We, yeah, we to do the imperial system would use gallons, pints. Yeah. It's a liter. It's a it's a it's a two liter bottle of Coke that he's got rummaging down there. Don't know how he put pants on, to be honest. Wow. Probably went to Muggsy. Muggsy, you ever heard of Muggsy jeans? They have a uh six percent spandex into their ninety four percent cotton. Uh, jeans, so you can get a bit of a stretch, and he definitely needs it because it is out there. Or he could have just a massive case of blue balls. I'm not really sure. I don't see. I don't. I'm only seeing Rail Ray, and I tell you one thing: he doesn't need extra space in his jeans. You know, he just looks. He just has black jeans on. Looks like it looks like a salmon colored button down with just like a black. Jacket, pretty, pretty, pretty normal looking dude. Really, he's got a British logo pin badge on his epa, on his on his collar. Yeah, and, and it, doesn't, it doesn't even say members only. It's just a regular looking black jacket, something I would actually wear. Nothing crazy. Do you tell you what? Do me Hair's parted, very World War Two pilot like. You know, just a chill dude. Get in Ray's boot and pull out for me. What's your first game? And I presume your mummy, mummy as well. Uh no, probably not. Um you got to have one of these as your mummy mummy and the other I know, one on switch. Unfortunately I do. Um This is uh Sinua Saga, Hellblade 2 for PC and uh um Xbox Series X, May twenty first. The sequel to the award winning Hellblade Senya's Sacrifice, Senua returns in a brutal journey of survival through the myth and torment of the of Viking Iceland intent on saving those who have fallen victim to the horrors of tyranny. Sinua faces the battle of overcoming the darkness within and without. Actually, May 24th is the glass staircase also. Hmm. Why was that not in my update? Because it literally just popped. I don't know what happened. Google just notified me. This never happened before. And it showed me that game. And I was really... Interested how much my phone is listening to me now. It's, it's got to watch out in your dream and made it real. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, like, like, like the world of goo without reading it, that seems something that needs to come out of Stingray. Uh, he Get needs ready. to release it. Yeah, world very Van said, Wilder like on Ray Rental Recordings release mm -hmm. on Nintendo Switch, May 23rd. Use living liquid creatures. God. <laughs> Use living liquid creatures to build bridges, grow towers, terraform terrain, and fuel flying machines. The world is beautiful, dangerous, and evolving. Every level is a realistic physics and fluid simulation. Build, splash, explode, destroy, fly, and roll your way through your own unique solutions to each level. 
local cooperative play exclusively on Nintendo Switch, build together, explore a new story spanning hundreds of thousands of years. Now, this was all passing me by until you have a story spanning hundreds of thousands of years and watch the world change. That suddenly Mm -hmm. went from, yeah, whatever, to that actually is intriguing. Mm -hmm. It's probably not what it says on the tin, but I for sure got excited. Now, for my mummy mummy, I VHS pick, Mm -hmm. if you don't mind, sir, I'm taking... Transformers G1 series, OG. It's Ooh. apparently the 40th anniversary. No way. I remember this coming out. They're doing some live cinema events around the UK as we speak where you can go and watch that. Are you That's serious? What, I'm being deadly serious. I was interested until I found out. Now, this might appeal to some people, but I did find out it was like a live like script room read along and I was like, Oh, that's interesting, but I don't really want to watch half of the screen of the cartoon that I loved or love. And then the top half a load of bearded old men recreating their child their youthful voice acting work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't Yeah, I think as a kid, eh, but as probably an adult, you're like, wow. But I don't you know. know. I just want to go in as a kid, get blown away, and come out. I don't want to find out that Father Christmas lives in Kettering. Yeah, true. What's your Mummy Mummy VHS pick, Stud? Uh, probably the first, what I think is the first superhero movie, um, Howard the Duck. Uh, I love this film. I so, think the soundtrack is absolutely yeah. banging. Howard and the Duck was a wild movie. Martin McFly's mum. I love mm-hmm. her so much. She's she is. So uh, beautiful. Yeah, she's beautiful. She really is. She also. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff with this movie that definitely is not PG. Super rated R. Play Duck. Play Duck with the actual. Human like uh, boobs, yeah, on a duck. <laughs> also, Howard the Duck, according to comic book lore, does have some powers. In this movie, he is just a three foot duck talking smack. He's like a very innocent version of Howard the Duck in the movie. Howard the Duck is not innocent. This dude is definitely uh, should be in jail. In the movie, though, he is, unless he's playing it for laughs, he's not quite the dirty dog you would have us believe. Oh, no, he is. I think I watched it as an adult just a few weeks ago. It was on, and I'm like, this is what I watched when I was, like, five. I never thought they thought it was was acceptable. Huh? I didn't even think it was that bad. Think about it, a five-year-old is looking at female boobs, you know, a human female boobs on a duck. And we're like, what's that? Like, I never even asked my mom what Bobby, that was supposed to be. Can I have a, I've got a confession for you. He tried to make out. I've got a confession for mm-hmm. you. When my blood boils, mm-hmm. and I think you know what I'm talking about, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll be honest with you. When I'm going through the Vulcan aging uh, treatment, Ponfar, that's one thing, okay? Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's what you've described there is the very tamest thing I've searched on Google. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. The very tamest thing. So I don't know if it's edgy or not. With that said, you're clutching a copy of the uncut director's edition of Howard the Duck. Thank you, Ray. Mm-hmm. I'm clutching whatever it said I said I wanted. It literally on- says in a little red sticker on the bottom, the 15 minutes you never know you wanted to see. <laughs> Let's find out. Do you think Howard the Duck would just sort of jump on Martin McFly's mum's back and nibble her neck with his bill? 100%. I think most men would do the same. Is that the 15-minute bit that we didn't know we needed? I will let you know next week. (laughs) 
I look on the floor. There is a very old British Rail logo and what looks like Coke mixed with milk just just layered around it uh, in a puddle. I don't know what to make of that, but I'll tell you what, it didn't come off the buffet cart of Rail Ray's buffet carriage, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. All that said and done, he's gone. We're still here. The only question left on people's lips is, what are you hoping to play, Sir Bobby? It depends. Uh, I could have sworn I purchased Stellar Blade. Mm. Um, I don't know why I got the Japanese version from PlayAsia, or I thought I did, and I purchased it. Um, not here yet. Maybe why I didn't did you buy it. that when it's available in the shops? Because... Um, my friend said that it's a different version from everyone else. He goes, there's, uh, it's, 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 he said it's not exactly what everyone else got. It's a different version. Mm. So I was interested in it and he showed me some photos. So I said, okay, same price. I'll get it. Is but it now I'm English thinking then, or not. what happened? Will it be in English? Yeah. It's a, uh, it's in Japanese, but the subtitles are English, which is fine. doesn't bother me. I can read. Yeah, that's fine. Um, that's why I played Rise of Ronin. I played that in entirely in Japanese. Did you play Ghost of... Um, yep. J- J- yeah, I did. I think it does a game, and it's set in a world that's not English. And, the sub- and it's in, let's say, Portuguese or whatever. I- I- I'll listen to it in Portuguese and put English subtitles. Yeah. I, I just think that gets reason. me, you know, I think that's the way to go. Okay. Anything like, I wish there was a way to put Greek inside, like, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. But you can't. But you know, it'd be cool. You can, can't you? Just change the spoken language to Greek. No, I don't have it. When I played Assassin's Creed Two, you could put the language to Italian. Yeah, but I don't think they. I don't see an option for now. You got maybe go back put the game on. I don't think you could do that. Try it. Interesting. Now I'll try. It. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Assassin's Creed 2 in Italian, but the only problem is when you go through to the English, they're all speaking Italian as well. Oh, really? Yeah. So the guys back in the modern day, they're all, <laughs> they're all, so uh, what are you telling me? Is it? <laughs> or maybe That's funny. Not. Maybe they're a bit more bonjour now. That's hilarious. Uh, what am I hoping to? Probably a bit more F1 manager. I feel like slobbing out on the couch, playing news in Portal. Uh, or sobbing out somewhere, maybe go out in the sun, lay there, brush myself up like a piece of port scratching. Although, wear sunscreen because I did get a massive burn on my head that turned into a big, thick scab. You gotta wear the sunscreen, man. Yeah, I, I, I've never been burnt before. However, many years old I am, never been burnt. Are you serious? Yeah, I've been burned several times. You're a very porcelain like human being, though. Mm hmm. Protect the cherub. Yeah. New t-shirt range. I want a t-shirt that's got Bobby in a state of disrepair and it just says protect or protect protect the bait, protect the cherub. Yeah, that'd be dope. I'd maybe, buy it. Maybe you as a stylized kid Icarus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, red hair. I want that as my Christmas present. Someone that'd make be, it happen. Um, we'll make it happen. Still no updates on the wiki page. Because we need a wiki. Mm-hmm. Um, but we can't create it. Someone's got to create it. I think Badabinkster was trying, but he needed approval from wiki. And I just don't think Ray was something that he could pin down in a description. Imagine one day where there's a UCP wiki where it lists every single different way. Mm-hmm. It lists every single different way and every single different Ray. There is. There is a way to do that. How? You send each podcast through an AI generator, which then listens to the description of Stingray. And then not only will it list it in words in the paragraph by each member of the UCP, it will also generate a photo. <laughs> Someone with more time. Two hundred and what are we? Sixteen. 
Yeah, but I, don't, I think initially Ray always p- appeared the same way, but Ray was involved in like a different clandestine activity each week. And then I don't know how, but suddenly Ray, and I don't know what episode this happened in, so needs to tell me. All of a sudden we saw Ray differently each time we saw him. I forgot about that. Yeah. Dude, it's been like four years. We're in our fifth year. I know. How does that make you feel? It feels like we just started yesterday. <laughs> in many ways. <laughs> but I don't feel like it's been that long, but it's been that long. You know what I mean? Which is a, as, which is a good thing. Well, this is episode 219. And I can't You know, like when you're playing a video what... game, you're like, oh, God, just end already. You know? And then yeah. you sometimes you're like, oh, my God, it's ending? What's, I can't believe it. I need part two. What do you think the AI called it? Called what? He's going to call this episode. Uh, something with, I'm going to say links, um, uh, you know, let me think. We talked about link a lot. We talked about bulge a few times. Um, I think it's gonna be like links, dark, dark, dark bulge. <laughs> you know? Link Stark Bulge. Yeah, or the bulge you didn't know you wanted. I don't know, something along that line. If but I don't I get a bulge in there, I'll be a little upset. You wanted. You, you, I mean, secretly, you don't want to say that. You know? Are you ready? Are you steady? Are you ready to go with the, I'll just do the list of our paid supporters who pay money yeah. each month? Absolutely. To keep the show alive? Are you ready? I Trestles, am. New York, a badder bigster, tingle tuna, digital monkery, still in the cupboard, roast space monk, the gaming gram, bald border, boba. I saw a picture of him on the Discord recently, and I'll be honest with you, the shoulders on it, absolutely. Listen, weird. forget the soldiers. I want to know. I think when you look at this guy, especially when he takes a selfie with a coffee cup, I just want to just grab him and just go sit on a stool. I don't even like stools, but I want to sit on a stool. And Are I don't want to want the four-legged seating device or the scientific name for a poopy. Oh no, like a stool where you sit. Yeah. Okay. You know, I don't want to sit on poop with him. That's <laughs> wild. But I want to sit like usually you get a coffee table, you sit down. I don't want to sit on a piece of poop with him, but like, I don't even want to put my coffee down on the table. I just want to sit on the stool and actually hold my coffee for the entire conversation because I think I'll learn something. Keep going. Guaranteed. Uh, Marathon Gaming, the absolute legend. Um, Where are you, Scott? Come to me. I'm I'm wearing nothing but a duvet. Uh, Seal Master Elliot sealed himself up in a sleeping bag the other day so tight and then got his mum to wrap it in cling film. Oof. Rumour has it, he's still inside. Doesn't want to break the seal. He don't he want to get out. What, do you think he, he can't breathe? Uh, did he? I mean, if you're wrapped in cling wrap, uh, you're screwed. Yeah, but if he popped a straw through there, he's technically broken That's the seal. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> yeah, but then he, he might as well unwrap if he's done that. Mm, I see what you're saying. Think of the pain he's going to be in when you unwrap a Japanese version of Stellar Blade. The agony yeah. is going to be unrivaled. And it's that plastic wrap, that Japanese plastic wrap's tighter than the American ones, for sure. They could seal some game. Guess who's next on the list? RGT fan club? No. My red-headed stepson. A man Ooh. so magnificent, I wished he was my own creation from my mm-hmm. lungs. Yeah, he's a great dude. Emma Sharp, just to confirm. Mm -hmm. OG Tom came back. He heard a female name name in the list of supporters, paid Mm -hmm. supporters. His first and only question, is she on the apps? Yeah. Bulletproof. The man, the legend, the the walking enigma, Harvey Retro. Yeah. Nowhere near Berlin, Greg Cummings. Mumsy, the RGT fan club, 
the mighty yet dangerous Pete Brocklehurst. Yeah. He throws slabs of concrete at people and hopes that they volley it back like football. Yeah, he's a wild dude. <laughs> he's not everyone's cup of tea, but he's certainly everyone's favourite breakfast spread. It's Billy Marmite. We've got Simon Pryke, and and he requests I say it sexually every time, his name. Mm-hmm. Fat Zangief. Yeah. Is that sexy, though? What would you describe as a sexy voice? Something very sultry. Very nice with, to the ear. Do you think what I did then was sexy, or do you think I should have said more like... Sounded more demonic, to be honest with you. Okay, so Fat Zangief is demonic. Whereas if yeah. I'd said more like Fat Zangief. Oh, Fat Zangief. Oh, oh like Fat Zangief. What? Oh, my God. Fat Zangief, baby. Something like that. I'm not very good at accents. So. I get my friend. You know who I'll do. I, get my friend I'm, to record I'm it. I'm wondering. We'll now. put that. We'll put that little bit in the end of just I'm, her saying it. I'm super nervous now about. Do you know what's cancel culture? If I end up on the scrapyard now, you would have to be collateral damage. The only thing left is RGT and Seb. Mm-hmm. They're involved in a. Uh, Vicious buyout. You know how I imagined his name being said? Who? Is that Fat Sangeefs? Yeah. You ever watch The Fog with Adrian Barbo? Not that I probably remember as explicitly. Adrian Barbo was a very voluptuous sexual woman icon in the 80s. Okay. Lots of horror movies. She did a radio show on the movie of The Fog where she was a old school... Jazz Lighthouse uh, radio station, you know. Okay. Um, I imagine her voice saying Fat Zangief. I would actually like her voice to read out all the names one episode would be fantastic. How close can you get to recreating it, do you think? So I we can, can get try pretty and damn understand. close. Give it a go. Oh, right now? Yeah. Ooh, on the spot, that's going to be difficult. I have to hear a little bit of her, still how she does some syllables and words. But she was like, I forgot, I even forgot the name of the radio station she did. But she was like something along the lines like, ooh, watch out right there. There's a fog coming in, rolling from the West Bank of California. And right now we're going to put on some smooth jazz by, uh, can't think of a name right now. But yeah. Put some smooth jazz on by the classical director, Fat Zangief. And look out there, the sparkling lights and hello, California. Something like that. That's what she okay. did. If you need your name read out in a specific way, jump in the Unglorious. It's your private space to talk about us and the show. Whatever takes your fancy, if I'm being honest with you. Um, Bobby, that draws us to a very neat line at the end of a show. It's been absolutely wonderful to embrace your... New York visage to mm-hmm. watch you arise in the morning like a sunrise. And now it's midday and your peak brightness shines down upon me. I feel irradiated, but in no danger of feeling burnt. Yeah. Also, it's only eight o'clock for me. Wow. Still peak morning. Still. <laughs> Which I love. I you know what I love every day. episode, not going to lie? When we're talking, as the sun rises through my window, it's like we watch the sunrise together every Sunday. Oh, that's so... Isn't that beautiful? I don't know what I can give you in return that's anywhere nearly as close as that. Probably I'll tell you what you could do. You have a beautiful little on-air neon light. Flick it on and off every now and then. Now, this has been mentioned before. That on-air light mm-hmm. turns on so bright... <laughs> That you can't see me? <laughs> you can't, Are you serious? Yeah, I'm being deadly serious. That's incredible. You can't. That see, little thing is incredible. Then that thing comes on so bright against that white wall that on video it goes invisible. Wow. So technically, it's brighter than the sunshine right now in my house. <laughs> Talk about a ray of light right there. Damn. When I got it, and I love it, I think it's great. I think it's awesome. I got it as a gift. Hmm. I got got given it as a gift, and I thought, oh, I can't wait to get that plugged in. 
As soon as I turned it on and looked on the camera, I was like, I have an idea. Yeah. You get a little bit of plexiglass, small piece of plexiglass, right? Do you want the little news? What? It's in plexiglass. No, no, it's okay. You put a little film, like for the window, just a little bit of a tint to soften the brightness. Yes. If you've listened this far, you know the intimate arrangements of my of the UCP's recording dungeon. Mm -hmm. If you want a picture of that, let us know on the Inglorious. That's the only place I'm going to respond to it as well. So if you want to be involved in that intimate chat, if you want to know what my inside leg measurement is, I'm sorry, but you have to pay the extra bucks. It's not a lot, is it, right now, during the adopter phase? It's not a great deal. We'll let you in. Mm -hmm. Right, if that's news, and one would imagine... It's probably not. I think that's all we have time for this week, listeners. As always, thank you for the pleasure of speaking to you. We look forward to speaking to you again next week. Until then, happy gaming. And remember, there's nothing wrong with being given the unofficial control. It's what you do with it that counts. Bobby, adios. Peace.